James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is August 13th, 2023, 1 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see some activity here with our electromagnetic shield. I want you to please note that 1400 is right here, 1600 is right here, and we are at 1800 currently. Now there was some activity prior to 1400 and after 1400, but the majority of the activity has happened between about 1630 and about 1730, 1715 UTC time. I wanted to point that out because we know when we see disturbances in our electromagnetic shield, it usually equates to Schumann resonance activity. And our Schumann resonance has not been updated. It's running several hours behind. Remember, it's currently 1800 UTC time. And most of the action happened in between 16 and 1800 UTC time. Let's take a look at what we have. All right, over to the Schumann resonance. You can see that there is spiking. And it's somewhat substantial. But this is from 1400 to 1600 when all the real electromagnetic shield problems happen between 1600 and 1800 UTC time. So let's take a look at that. Moving over to our six day comparison, we finally see where 1800 is here and we see that we've had some activity here. Now this spike might have been off the charts. It wasn't covered on the Schumann Residence individual day model. It is being covered here. We have a similar spike here. And these spikes, I wouldn't say, are off the chart. They're under 40 hertz, which is somewhat substantial. I believe it's because the agitator wasn't directly over the modeling station, as I will soon show you. Let's find out what the agitator is and what's causing this. I want you to remember... The Schumann resonance had never been measured over 37 hertz, which we see it has today, before 2017. What started happening in 2017? We started to lose our magnetosphere. And according to papers that I've read about the Schumann resonance spiking, we also have been having our magnetosphere cavity collapse. Therefore, Bouncing these agitators off a much lower part of the atmosphere, the D region, when these agitators used to go right through the D region and bounce off the E or F regions. This is actual fact per mainstream science. Heading over to our amplitudes, we see that the activity started right around 1300 UTC time. This is only going to go through 1600 UTC time again lagging by about four hours. We see that activity between 13, 14, 15, and 1600 UTC time, but we don't see the enhanced activity between 1600 and 1800 UTC time. Remember, 1800 UTC time equates to 11 a.m. Central Time here in the U.S. It's minus seven hours. East Coast, minus six hours. West Coast, minus nine hours. Y'all get it now. All right, we see that the geophones, the ULF noise indicators, the ELF noise indicators, and our second SR frequency all reacted at the same time around 1300 UTC time. We see yesterday that started up at around 1400 UTC time and lasted to about 1900 UTC time. I believe we're going to see something similar today. We're just not getting a real-time chart. Looking for agitators that might have caused these Schumann resonance spikes, we head over to CERN and the LHC. We know that the LHC had a leak, and it's currently being repaired, and they don't expect any beams until the first half of September, and they're not specific as to when that is going to occur. It does scare me, in fact, that there was a leak within this LHC. 
So now we head over to our KP indexes to try to find out if there's any space weather hitting the planet. We look at our Boulder, our Fredericksburg, our estimated planetary, and our college index, and nothing whatsoever is hitting the planet. It's been a very, very quiet day per solar activity. Then we head over to the model location specifically so that we can see exactly what's going on in the area. And we can see that there's lightning storms above the modeling station, maybe not directly above them currently. This is real time stuff. Modeling station is going to be located right here where my cursor is, and I will zoom in. But we can see the lightning storms surrounding them. If these storms were directly over the station itself, you would see these spikes going off the charts, probably exceeding 100 hertz. As we zoom in, there is the modeling station right there. And we can see that surrounding it, and probably already have passed it, we have lightning storms, right? Very easy to see what the agitator is here. Now let's find out what happened and why these spikes are on again. Bouncing over to take a look at our magnetometers, we see that we're heavily into the negative territory here. Negative 56, negative 101.4. Looks like we're trying to climb out of that hole, but right now our actual magnetosphere is taking a beating and the cavity has collapsed. Exactly what the papers indicated was the cause of the incredible Schumann spikes that have increased since 2017, followed by spikes up to and over 100 hertz, and more recently spikes up to and over 200 hertz. This is the reason. This is what's going on. Our actual atmosphere and cavity are both collapsing. Now taking a look again at the single day Schumann Residence model. This model only covers the last 10 hours. You can see that 18 has not been written there, but it does start to cover that time period. And we can see that we're having more activity. We can assume that this activity will continue as long as thunderstorms are in the area. Now, I'd love to have your opinions on this. Let me know if these human residents are something that you detect and if they affect you and in what ways. That said, God bless you. Share, subscribe, and always remember that anything is possible. Bizarro world.